guys have probably heard of this brand new x Real camera and I ordered it and it just arrived in the mail so in this video we're going to be unboxing this brand new 3D camera and putting it to the test. It's called the x Real Beam Pro. Personally I've got my expectations kind of high for this camera's performance so we'll find out and I think I'm as eager as you are to get this unboxed and see how good it really is. So right away we can see that the stereo baseline just from this image is very wide on this camera and that's what's got me the most excited about it. I think it should also have pretty high resolution, but we really got to open it up to find out exactly how good it is. So let's do that right now. All right. And wow, camera is immediately visible right here. As we open up the box, you can see that it really indeed does have a wide stereo baseline. And it's kind of like a phone, you know, this whole form factor is like a smartphone, but it isn't. I kind of butchered that opening right there, but yeah, this this is really similar to what a smartphone looks and feels like, but I think it's really just supposed to be a camera. You got the flash in the middle here and the name x Real. So I like the way this looks and feels. It's not like the lightest thing that I've ever held. And one other thing that I'm pretty certain about is that it doesn't have an actual 3D screen. So that's one other kind of disappointing thing for me, but I'm gonna turn it on right now. And we can see that it's powered by Android. So this basically is like a smartphone, but the point of it is just to be, to function as a 3D camera. It's got a hello, ni hao, similar thing to like the iPhone. I'm gonna go with English, not Chinese. Shoot spatial videos with Beam Pro. Connect x -Real glasses to relive unforgettable moments. Thing is, I don't have x -Real glasses, but I'm gonna be viewing the 3D spatial videos that I shoot on this on the Loompad 2, which I have right here and on all my other 3D devices. So we've got some AR applications that's kind of advertising here. And um, yeah, now we're at the home menu of this camera. So I guess there's like an Xreal store to get apps and things like that, but really don't care about any of that. The only thing that I care about is this right here. So I'm super excited to try this out and snap a bunch of pictures and see how they actually look. So I think what I'm gonna do is run outside while it's still light out, take a bunch of pictures and then come back and see, and we'll talk about how good the quality actually is. So we have photo, and then here's spatial video. And so you can see there's a uh, photo, spatial video, and spatial photo capture mode. So I'm gonna snap a spatial photo and see what happens. I took a bit of time to get it, but here, yeah, we got an image that comes out side by side, and it looks to be quite high resolution. So I am super excited to check this out on these 3D displays. And this has got me kind of very eager, already pretty optimistic. Seems like just from this one little, this one little attempt or glimpse that this is gonna be much better than the quality on the iPhone 15 Pro. But it's gonna take a little bit of experimenting to find out. So while it's still light outside, I'm gonna run out and take some spatial photos and videos. Let's see really quick if a 3D video does the same thing. So this is 3D video capture mode. And if I stop it, and then click on the video I captured, then here, same thing. So we got the video side by side. Having a hard time zooming in on this one, but it also does look like the quality is pretty good. So I'll snap a few photos and videos and then we'll check them out on some of the 3D devices and see how good this quality really is. Okay, so where do I begin? Do you wanna hear the good news or the bad news first? Maybe I should call it the very bad news. But let's just start with the good news. The quality of the photos captured on this are actually pretty good. It's got nice depth as you would expect because of the well-separated cameras. And it reminds me in a way of the, sort of reminds me of the photos captured on the Loompad 2. But the problem with this one is that when you zoom in, it seems to get a bit of a loss of detail and quality, especially with stuff that's not up close. So if you have an up close shot and you zoom in, there's good detail. But when you have stuff far off into the background, like scenery uh, beyond the subject and the things that are close to you, yes, there's good depth. But when you zoom in, like the stuff that's a little bit further out, really loses a ton of detail right away. So I don't know, maybe um, I need to practice a little bit more with this camera, but it's there's the possibility that it's just not good at focusing and capturing good detail on um, all that in 3D, which is not the case with the Loompad 2 and the Nubia Pad 3D. I think the camera does a beautiful job actually, even though there's, a, there's less depth than this, the depth is still good. And then it captures a ton of detail out uh, surprisingly far into the distance. So that's the good news. The camera seems to be actually a pretty clear, good, 3D camera overall, just in general, but the problems here, there are a ton of them. 
And the first one is that, let me just start with the worst. The software here is abysmal. It is literally the worst thing I've ever encountered. I thought the CoolPad Android phones, I'll do a separate review for those, had it rough. But this is just awful, like the worst I have ever seen. And clearly, they are making it intentionally difficult to use 3D videos and photos on anything other than the Xreal glasses, which I'm not going to buy. And that's not the only problem, but it's really just intended for that. You plug those in, maybe you get a great, easy, simple, seamless experience with those glasses. But trying to get these things on literally anything else, I was having a hell of a time just getting it onto the loom pad. I plugged in three different laptops to try to get it to recognize this device. And they made it so that it does not appear as like a storage device or a device where you can access the storage of the camera or the DCIM folder. It just won't show up, it won't let you do it. So you cannot plug it in and offload photos and videos onto a laptop. The other thing that is just terrible is that this has the Chinese app stores on it and it's hard to download Google and things like that. I was able to download Google Chrome, but on Google Chrome, I try to download just Google Drive and there's no access to the Google Play Store unless you do something, go out of your way to get that APK downloaded and running on this. It's not that easy to do. And then even if you could, one of the biggest problems here is that, okay, so you can use Google Chrome and the web browser. I opened up Google Drive and I logged in and I went to share my videos and photos to Google Drive because that can basically get it to any of my devices the easiest. Well it won't let you share it to anything other than Bluetooth or some weird Chinese app that I've never heard of. Um, that's obviously not gonna work easily with any of my other devices. It just won't even show up as an option and I don't see any way to add it. So this is just unheard of to me. Like you can't even share, you can go into the photo album or go directly from the camera, either your photo library album or just from the photo viewing part within the camera app, neither of those let you share to like anything, just Bluetooth. So, well, Bluetooth, I guess, sort of works and I connected it to the LoomPad 2 and started trying to send some photos over Bluetooth. The first videos I tried to send just failed, so the it didn't work well. And then I sent over some photos and it's extremely slow. I was able to view them and confirm that the 3D quality, you know, actually is pretty decent. So that was the only thing that was kind of a relief, but then I tried to send more photos over and it has to be done one at a time. It's super slow for each one. My sense from capturing vid videos with this is that yes, it just has a default mode set to 60 frames per second in 3D with this camera, which you would think would be a great thing. But the problem is I don't think this phone, I hesitate to call it a phone because it's pretty garbage outside of just the camera, it's got, it's one of those things where it can't keep up with itself. I feel like it's trying to capture in 60 frames per second, but whatever is powering this at all, it's not powerful enough to even like keep up with the capture of whatever you're trying to do. It, it just felt, that was my initial impression anyway, but, but it looked like it was stuttering pretty bad. So what's the point of capturing at 60 frames per second if it's gonna be super choppy? I don't know. I am really disappointed, not so much because the camera is bad, but the, I guess the hardware outside of that, and then the software being literally the, the most hard to work with software I've ever seen. It seems to intentionally be made difficult to like work with anything outside of this Xreal product line. I can't say 100%, maybe I'll find better ways to work around this because I do. I mean, it's so convenient to be able to carry around a camera like this that takes um, photos and videos that are close to the level of the LoomPad 2 and the LoomPad 3D or better depth, but if, even if the resolution isn't quite as good or sharp, still, that would be wonderful. It seems way better than what the iPhone can take. Like, I'm filming in 3D on my iPhone 15 Pro right now, but I actually kind of hate it. Like, I really do not like the quality of the spatial cameras is really not that good on the iPhone at all. It's a shame if I have this camera and I can take this around, but it's nearly impossible to use and view on anything else. That's just my initial thoughts. Maybe I'll do another like full review at a later date once I've spent more time with it and actually tested things to see if I can work out the kinks, but my initial impressions and advice to you is, is to hold off on purchasing this unless you have a pair of these glasses, then maybe it, it'll work better for you. And then the other thing is if you don't live in China, it's just gonna be hard to use because this is not made 
really with a global audience in mind, clearly. Uh, using it, everything is just Chinese apps. Um, you gotta log into WeChat or Baidu or these different things. And then even the keyboard, the keyboard, like I couldn't, there was not an English keyboard available by default, which is just crazy to me. Even phones and things in China obviously have that. This one does not. So I think I would have to like figure out a way to just download another keyboard before installing it, but I don't think I'm motivated enough to do that. But then I have to like, it's really difficult to use the Chinese keyboard and then hit like the right letter, hit enter, and then move on to the next letter. And it takes forever to even type in Google that way. So yeah, there are a ton of things that are wrong with this phone. And unless you're sure you're gonna be able to use it with your Xreal glasses, then I would say it's really not worth putting up with all this headache just to be able to use this camera. Let's just hope that some better options are gonna be available from better companies in the near future. At least that Acer camera is on the way. I'm gonna hold out hope that other things are coming too. Maybe the 3D smartphone that Leia is gonna release with its partner this year or next year, whatever that is, will have a good 3D camera, who knows? But yeah, this can't be it. This is really just, uh, I'll try to find a way to include some samples of the quality of 3D images here so you guys can download them or see them maybe somewhere in this video. But thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or what your thoughts are in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to this channel. Yeah, let me know what else you would like to know about this or anything related to it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in a future video.